Today, humanity faces unprecedented challenges never encountered before. One of them is the adaptation to climate change. The climate of the planet is changing and will continue to change with uncertain consequences and impacts. To deal with such difficult times, society needs to act by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, the result of burning fossil fuels, through a process called decarbonisation. For this reduction, the transition from the present European energy system to renewable energy sources is essential. In 2016, renewable energy represented 17% of energy consumed in the EU, while globally this stood at 18%. So, is the current evolution in the implementation of renewable energy sources enough to achieve the objective of 2050? Medeus, a project funded by the EU under the framework of Horizon 2020, analyzes the possible different pathways for achieving the European objectives of a low-carbon society by 2050. Medeus, with a consortium of 11 partners, has constructed a new open-source energy model to guide the transition to a low-carbon European socio-economy. One of the most important factors in the decarbonisation process is the energy supply and demand. So, energy sector must drive the transition from a socio-economy based upon fossil fuels to a new one based on renewable energy sources. However, this transition needs to achieve multiple aims. Protection of the environment, creation of quality jobs, and keeping social welfare. So, citizens, policymakers, and key stakeholders require tools that will focus beyond the energy sector by including other important domains, such as economy, societal aspects, biophysical resources, and climate change impacts. So there is an urgent need not only for modeling tools, but also for scenarios analysis that allow for projections of evolution of key indicators. Unfortunately, the most available tools for analyzing the energy transition lack the integration of such important aspects. At Medeas, we are addressing these gaps by providing a set of scenarios and a new modeling tool that allows the analysis of the transition in an integrative point of view. The modeling tool developed within Medeas has three objectives. The first objective is to identify the key physical parameters as can be the net energy available to society or the amount and cost of necessary materials. The second objective is to highlight emerging challenges for the implementation of a transition to a low carbon economy and how to overcome possible drawbacks and provide solutions. The third one suggests strategies to face such challenges to a sustainable energy system. Medeus also provides scenario projections until 2050, analyzing for each scenario the challenges ahead and the best policies for overcoming barriers, ensuring a smooth, renewable transition. At Medeus, we have three scenarios. Business as usual, which means no efforts beyond the current trends in the decarbonization process. Optimal level transition, which means all possible efforts put in practice starting at 2020 and mid-level transition, which means all efforts put in practice starting at 2030. And the message is anyway that we have to hurry and to try to implement the transition to renewable as soon as possible. We have the possibility, scenarios are clear, uh, but we need to work a lot as societies, with policymakers, with institutions to make these transitions really possible. Medeus is providing an aggregated energy economic environmental model system that helps to evaluate impacts and provide guidance about the challenges ahead of the renewable transition in Europe. The model has been designed applying system dynamics, which is particularly useful when we want to study a system with different parts interacting in a complex way. The fact all these characteristics play together to um, allow us to capture non um, linear dynamics that are present in the system but not just in the energy system but also in other parts of the system like you know the economy and uh, climate and land and agriculture and because uh, Medias is a system dynamic model it can actually uh, make a very comprehensive assessment of uh, the different parts of the system and how the energy system 
uh, fits within a much larger and more complex uh, context. The Medeus model is divided into seven sub-modules. It consists of a modular and flexible structure where each module can be expanded, simplified or replaced by another version or sub-model. In fact, it covers more than 4,000 variables, running from 1995 to 2050. The module's main characteristics are economy and population. The population follows the evolution of the UN forecasts. Demand-led growth and supply constraints. The economic structure is captured by the integration of input-output analysis. Energy. This module includes the renewable and non-renewable energy resources potentials and availability, taking into account biophysical and temporal constraints. In total, there are more than 20 primary energy sources considered. Energy infrastructures represent the infrastructures of power plants to generate electricity and heat. Materials. The Materials module compares the demand of each of the 38 materials considered critical in terms of their availability according to existing reserves and resources and shows a warning when any of the limits has been exceeded. Climate. The Climate Change module converts primary energy consumption into greenhouse gas. Part of these emissions are absorbed by forests and oceans and part are accumulated in the atmosphere, leading to an increase in the average global temperature compared to the pre-industrial period. Land use mainly takes into account the needs of land for renewable energy sources. It estimates, among other aspects, the need for land for biofuels or solar plants and compares them with other land uses, such as the urban area. Social and environmental impacts this module translates the biophysical results of the simulations into metrics related with social and environmental impacts. The objective of this module is to contextualize the implications for human societies in terms of well-being for each simulation. The connections between different modules are represented by arrows. Most modules have bi-directional linkages. The Medeus model obtained can be modified and expanded depending on the availability of new data or new information. The uh, Medeus model is conceived as a policy assessment tool, so uh, it's, uh, it has been developed in order to uh, support decision making. Medeus builds on three important innovations. First, it combines the human and the natural world in a, in a dynamic way. Second, we model a wide range of environmental indicators so that allows us, for example, to see whether or not there is enough land available to grow biofuels, whether or not there is enough water. And thirdly, we also model different economic and social indicators so we could see what are the effects of these scenarios on poor households, for example. So. This allows us to model economic, environment and social indicators of the decisions we make today and their impacts in the future. You build models to answer certain questions. And Medeas is well fitted to answer some questions we cannot answer in a moment now without the current tools. They are, have been built for different purposes and Medeas can broaden our toolbox more or less to be able to answer questions. To give an idea of these variables and results, Medeus presents some of those that most succinctly summarize the impacts of the pathways that society might take in business as usual, BAU, and optimal level transition, OLT scenarios. Business as usual considers the limitation of fossil fuel production, technological improvement, and account for climate change, and optimal level transition considers the maximum effort on implementing renewable energy sources starting at 2020. The first of these variables are the global CO2 emissions from fossil fuels. This chart shows the evolution of the total equivalent CO2 emissions produced from the combustion of fossil fuels globally in gigatons of CO2. After decades of increasing CO2 emissions, they reach a tipping point around 2020. After that, similar trends occur for both BAU and OLT scenarios. Indeed, in the BAU scenario, emissions decline quite abruptly from 2020 to 2050. Meanwhile, in the OLT, despite a small spike of emissions in 2030, 
the trend is quite similar to those of the BAU scenario. By looking at the same charts on the EU scale, we can see that fossil fuel scarcity will hit Europe in a similar manner to the rest of the world. Therefore, emissions produced from these energy sources are expected to start declining progressively from 2020 as well, both for the BAU and OLT scenarios. Again, the energy requirements of the transition will be higher in the OLT scenario, and that extra energy will have to also come from fossil fuels. Another important variable is the gross domestic product, the GDP, the evolution of which is the most widely used indicator of the health of any economy. World gross domestic product is expressed in US dollars at the constant exchange rate of 1995. One of the first things noticed by looking at these results is that between 1995 and 2015, the global GDP grew steadily, interrupted only by 2008's financial crisis. The inflection point for the GDP comes around 2020 in the BAU scenario, and a plateau is reached a few years later, between 2020 and 2030. This trend is a sign of severe economic stagnation and is explained by the decline of fossil fuels availability. On the other hand, for the OLT scenario, although some turbulent times seem to crop up from about 2030, also due to fossil fuel scarcity, the higher availability of energy, mostly from renewable sources, would allow the global economy to continue growing in line with historical trends. According to Medea's simulations, the European economy will take a harder blow than the global average. But if the transition is started sooner rather than later, it will be much less dramatic than if we keep doing business as usual. The message that we can extract is that if we start the transition straight away, although there is an initial increase on emissions due to burning fossil fuels to power the transition, at the end, the emissions will drop and the economy won't be seriously affected. On the contrary, in business as usual, uh, the abuse of consumption of fossil fuels will conduct to periods of energy scarcity, which although will imply a decrease in the greenhouse gas emissions, will have catastrophic effects on the global economy. One of the other variables that is useful for this analysis is the percent of primary energy from renewable energy sources in the total primary energy sources. Charts show the percentage of the primary energy originated from renewable sources with regard to the total primary energy sources. In global terms, in the OLT scenario, the percentage of RES utilization is significantly higher than in BAU, which is in fact what allows the previously seen trend of the GDP for the OLT scenario. The energy transition comes with an increased land footprint, which is the extra land required for the construction of RES power plants. The evolution of those land requirements over time tend to increase. By 2050, the construction of RES power plants would take roughly the same land surface as the 30% of EU countries' surface, which is three times more than the area occupied today by renewable energy sources, or the equivalent to the surface of Spain and Germany together. If we do a similar exercise at the EU scale, by 2050, the land area required to build renewable energy sources power plants to supply the energy demands of Europe would be equivalent to the surface of Germany and Italy together, whilst the area occupied today is roughly equivalent of half Germany. Something similar applies for lithium extraction. Taking into account that current worldwide lithium reserves are estimated at 16 million tonnes, US Geological Survey, by 2050 we would have extracted almost 90% of the total amount. If we take a look on the EU side of things, lithium requirements would account roughly for 2-3% of the total extraction until 2050. One of the last examples of Medea simulations is the temperature of the atmosphere and upper ocean relative to pre-industrial data. The comparison of both scenarios gives a better behaviour model for the OLT because it has a lower increase, particularly significant in 2050. So we can conclude though that a rapid transition will not prevent atmospheric temperatures from reaching the 2 degrees centigrade limit. If similar policies to those of Medea's OLT scenario were implemented, the economic impact would be less intense and climate effects would be delayed.
Hopefully, that extra time will allow society to adapt to the impacts of climate change and to develop new and more efficient renewable energy production and storage technologies requiring lower mineral and land footprints. The model simulations in such scenario projections show how any subsequent delay in working on the transition through a higher implementation rate of renewable energy sources would have dramatic consequences on the population well-being and on our planet's climate and ecological stability. But keeping to business as usual will contribute to extreme, difficult and uncertain situations for the survival of globalised societies and possibly for humanity as a whole. At Nereas, we are addressing two needs, open source and transparency. Open source by providing a public database to run the model and a software at three geographical levels, world, Europe and country, and country at two levels, Austria and Bulgaria. And transparency with a massive open online course, an users forum and extensive documentation to use and run the model. We decided to involve in the project, uh, as soon as possible, uh, uh, stakeholders from different backgrounds who would be uh, involved in the project, would give us the feedback, who would, they would know exactly what we are doing and um, uh, see how we could uh, make um, a better use of uh, what we are developing. I think it's it's a very innovative and new tool. So if if we see it in a, in a process of developing models, it's really at, at the at the front end of, of what we have now. So I'm an economist, so I read with a special interest all the uh, parts of the economic model, and I think there are some very interesting features which are usually absent in this type of model. Uh, me, as a social scientist, I'm very uh, uh, enthusiastic about the new possibilities that we have in formalizing behavioral theories and building artificial societies. But that, of course, provides us with output that should be communicated with other disciplines. And exactly this is what Medeas is also doing, offering a platform for different disciplines to really communicate on deep levels. So I expect a lot from this methodology in the future. This kind of tools is made for the European Parliament, for the European community. It's not made for scientists, for other scientists. You know? in, in this moment, of course, we are working on, on at this level, but we have to implement it uh, as soon as possible for the for the for the policy makers and and uh, and people and association and non governative uh, associations etc all these kind of people people that makes politics i'm definitely going to keep an eye on the medeas project and its further development um, both for my own for use in research but also in teaching i think that's some potential there as well that if we if we can build some more simple, um, a more simple IAM based on Medeas, it could be a really useful teaching tool as well. Normally, economic models uh, that are used in energy model modeling, if they are working in the idea that it is relative scarcity, but in energy and fossil fuels, especially, we have uh, we will face the issue of absolute scarcity, which means we will not have all the energy that we are pretending to consume. And playing with the model, you can trying to understand where are the bottlenecks, where are the key variables that are affecting this, uh, this over demand, because it would say that it is it's a scarcity, but it's a scarcity because we are demanding too much. Then it will, will challenge, we can have it in relation to technical issues, also with social practice issues. And I think this is another of the points that Medeas is bringing to this uh, big challenge that we have in the energy issues. What I like about the Medeas approach is the transdisciplinary approach. You take into account what social scientists, technologists believe, economists, and this is all flowing together. It is rather a framework for reflecting model assumptions than a model you press and the model, uh, you press the button and the model runs. So it is a tool for reflection. Medeas allows to reflect. In these challenging times, different approaches are needed. 
And this is what Medea does. It provides original tools to face them and explores new alternatives to guide the energy transition.